Getting good food into the diets of people in remote and northern communities in this province isn't always easy. A new effort is underway at Dennis Frank and Cromarty High School that aims to help. Joining us for that story from our studio at Confederation College in Thunder Bay, John Thompson, who heads up our Northwestern Ontario hub. Welcome, John. Hi, Jan. So you got a new article on our website talking about a new initiative started by one at Thunder Bay High School. Tell us, what do we need to know about that? Well, uh, Dennis Franklin Cromartie uh, School has started an, an initiative that they hope that by the end of the year, they're going to be able to remove all processed and prepackaged foods from being served in any way inside the school. Uh, we're told that that would make them the first school in Ontario to do so. What's, what's so important about this food lab? You know, we talk about, um, you know, initiatives that are done across Ontario that have kind of similar labs. But what's so important about this one? Well, uh, the, the way they're going about this uh, is, is having it student-led. Um, and so what that looks like is there are culinary classes, of course, and then on top of that you have a food club, a, or a, a cooking club, a baking club, and then something that they're calling a catering team. And so DFC is unique in that it's an all-Indigenous school. Uh, there are outside organizations that have office space there, and so the catering team is going to be catering for those organizations. And then when, uh, over the course of the next few months, the recipes that they create are going to become the food menu in the cafeteria as designed, uh, cooked, and approved by the student body itself. Now this is an after-school club. Tell me what is so significant uh, for this high school to have this program in place and running? Well, uh, DFC is unique uh, by, the, by Ontario standards um, in that its students are uh, from northern communities, uh, north of or north of the roads, what we call the far north of Ontario. Um, and there are no high schools in their communities, and so they are uh, sent to Thunder Bay uh, to attend high school. Um, and so the, uh, the dietary conditions of the far north, uh, and in some cases the uh, social indicators of health in the north, uh, have created a situation for them that uh, the, the student diabetic rate is three to five times higher than the normal population. The obesity rate is very high. Uh, last year we reported that north of 40% of the students at DFC had opioid addictions upon coming to school, and the success that uh, DFC had in moving them to uh, to suboxone programs, and so uh, and so to put healthy food on the on the menu for those students and to have them taking a part in that uh, is perceived as a form of uh, of social and mental health, uh, in, and and improving the the rates of uh, of of the social determinants of health. Um, your story went up last week. Uh, what's the reaction been so far? Well, the reaction's been really exciting. The, uh, I'm told by Mandy O'Connor, who, uh, who is the chef and, and fairy godmother, uh, according <laughs> to the sign on her door, uh, that um, there have been a number of organizations in Thunder Bay that have reached out, uh, and that includes business organizations, uh, other school boards, uh, for both catering and they see an opportunity to build uh, relationships uh, between the uh, settler and indigenous community uh, through the, the two things that seem to be the easiest roads in, and those are food and children. Early next year, these students will face off for the title of Kitchen Warrior. So it sounds like a cool title. I'm seeing the tongs and, uh, and everything out. Uh, it's a cooking competition. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? And uh, is there potential for this to kind of span across the province? Uh, well, I don't know about spanning across the province, but uh, it's it's really exciting to imagine how uh, culinary um, culinary arts in schools could sort of be transformed into sport. Uh, that's something that DFC is going to start doing. They have a celebrity chef coming in in the new year, and and they're going to put the, they're going to pit these teams uh, on the catering team against each other. Uh, there there are a number of different initiatives that are underway in um, in the rest of Thunder Bay schools, and and again those school boards are now communicating with each other. And so what we might be experiencing here is an opportunity for schools to begin uh, cooking as sport. And I think that would be a really exciting change to the way that we normally perceive uh, what we used to call home economics in my time <laughs> in high school. 
Now, this sounds like great news coming out of Thunder Bay. And, you know, we often hear, unfortunately, how divided Thunder Bay is and how prevalent racism is here. You kind of alluded to it a little bit and talked about it. How can this program help uh, with that? Uh, well, I think, uh, yeah, I think the, the organizations that are reaching out, some of whom, including the Rotary Club, uh, have a directive and an aim this year of uh, Indigenous inclusion. And so, uh, you know, that's one of the ways in which uh, they're finding an easy road in to be able to do this. Um, in, in the rest of Thunder Bay, uh, the food movement, food security movement, is actually far ahead. Um, and so we're seeing a number of different initiatives. The Thunder Bay Food Strategy now has an indigenous circle off the edge of it that is consulting with a couple of dozen organizations as to how to accommodate indigenous food inside of the, the broader Thunder Bay Food Strategy. Uh, the grass Roots organization Roots, Roots to Harvest, which is a really solid group, um, is uh, is running uh, programming with youth in which it's attempting to uh, reframe indigenous uh, food knowledge as food literacy. And so those would be things like on what angle you cut a gooseneck, when it's right to take a bull or, or a, a cow, or when uh, wild rice is properly dried. And so when you look at uh, the Canadian, what we call Canadian food, we often say there isn't a lot there, there it's just kind of poutine, right? <laughs> um, but in reality, uh, the food on this land has been operating for time immemorial, and, and some of those, uh, in did, and, and the, an effort to, in, 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 to make that that more indigenous is underway in, a, in an almost mainstream way in Thunder Bay. So that's really exciting. Now, John, you also have an update on a story that you did in 2017 in the summer about how remote Ontario First Nations was hoping to make food more affordable and accessible. Now, we have a development on that story. What can you give us on the latest? Well, the, uh, the story we did last year was related to a hangar that is under construction in the uh, Sioux Lookout Airport. Um, and the design of that is that there are a number of First Nations in the far north own their own airline. And they can, they can have a food hangar in Sioux Lookout and run that food up through to the north uh, with whatever available space is still in those, in those planes. And so uh, we're pleased to announce tonight that the, uh, the, the First Nations Inuit Health Branch has has signed on to become the anchor tenant of that hangar, which means that project is going to go ahead with federal support. Uh, and there are a number of uh, consultations underway uh, to get uh, to expand that project from the three or four First Nations who initially were part of it uh, up to as many as 33, the communities that telescope into Sioux Lookout. And so what that effectively does is it's not just about food security for the most food insecure population in Ontario, it's about food sovereignty and taking control of the pipeline that runs food into the far north where we know food is prohibitively expensive. What's exciting about that, back to the beginning of our story here today, is that the children of those families that would be getting that are the ones who attend Dennis Franklin Cromartie High School. And so they're educating the youth on, uh, on culinary skills while making that food available for their younger brothers and sisters and, and parents back home. Full circle. A very important story. Thank you so much, John Thompson. Always a pleasure having you in studio. Thanks, Jan. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.